Uh, greetings to all of you from Hope Not Hate. Uh, it's fantastic to be here, and this is your second show of solidarity and celebration of our modern and rich and diverse cultures in as many weeks, and it's great that there's still as many here, maybe not quite as many, but almost as many as on your pe previous uh, uh, event on the 14th of November, where you had to stand uh, against people trying to divide your community here in Glasgow and within Scotland. Um, it's clear that we are the majority, we are the decent people, we are decent people behaving decently, and that we do not stand by when members of our community are under attack. Uh, the invitation to speak here today um, asked for us to maybe uh, talk about our experience of racism ourselves as well as tackling racism, and as you can see, I'm, I'm white, I'm English, I'm from, brought up in South London, but I was brought up in the 70s, and I lived a few miles from Brixton, uh, next door to us, uh, our neighbours were a Trinidadian family, and in all the hot summers, we were in and out of each other's gardens playing cricket. So it was hard, you know, it was like a gap in between the fences. So that's a sort of part of the culture that I grew up with when I was 13. In our local West Norwood Library, Linton Crazy Johnson came to sort of read poetry, and that's something that I sort of is part, of the, you know, part of my my uh, growing up. It's part of what I'm willing to defend uh, in London, in the South, and, and across, uh, uh, you know, England, Scotland, and Wales. Um, also as a teenager, one day coming home on the bus, uh, some kids got on and called me a packy lover. The friend that was sitting next to me instantly replied, he's Indian actually, he's not from Pakistan. And she was Jewish and it hadn't occurred to me until that time that she'd already been used to sort of public abuse and having to deal with those situations. And these are things that we may have thought that we had seen uh, a lot less of these days, the fights of the 70s, 80s and 90s. And unfortunately, those incidents are becoming more frequent, it's more acceptable, kind of casual racism is, is becoming a kind of norm. Um, and today, I think, all of us are aware, as it's been mentioned, that this can turn into much more uh, vicious, violent attacks on people and, and loss of lives. So we cannot be complacent. And I know within Scotland, you've got a proud tradition of not voting for the far right. Um, in today's climate, there is more of a, of a uh, platform for them to gain electoral success. Uh, and one of the things um, that we do at Hope Not Hate, we know there's a very large battle. We know we haven't got a monopoly on, on challenging the far right, on tackling racism and fascism. <coughs> That's really all of our responsibility in all of our you know, working lives, our trade unions and, and the communities that we live in. But what we try to do in our, our sort of small part of what we do in the large kind of job that needs to be done is to really tackle the electoral success of the far right. Because once people uh, gain electoral success, it's very difficult in the democracy we live in to say that they haven't got a political mandate from some part of a proportion of, of uh, the electorate. Um, so we're, we're hoping to work alongside all of you that are here already. We've had a lot of in increased inquiries in the recent years because people have been feeling that increase in the kind of chat at bus stops, in <coughs> pubs, uh, of, of racism that's going unchallenged. And people wanted us to start having hope not hate groups and events around the country alongside all the other groups that operate, Show Racism, Red Card, UAF. Uh, we're starting now to make contacts here. We can't do it from where we are down there. It's up to people here. We're there to support um, uh, Hope Not Hate activists across, across Scotland, and we hope that people will kind of work united. As we said today, there is no room for us to fight amongst ourselves or to have different political agendas or to have other agendas alongside what we're doing. It's a really crucial, um, you know, powerful message to that small minority who uh, are activists and voting for, for far-right parties like the BNP, that all of us have one thing that does unite us, um, and, and that I think is absolutely crucial, that people work alongside each other. Um, in terms of, of the, the ways in which things are addressed, the other issues, I mean, racism, I think, has to be tackled at all levels. It has to be in your workplace. It has to be in the pub. Um, as well as in a more organised way through the trade unions in, in equality uh, in the workplace. And I'm, I welcome the report that just came out from Scottish TUC, Sectarianism in the Workplace, you know, which is important that we, we research and, and illustrate and make recommendations about all the issues that need to be tackled, things that maybe aren't easy to, to be talked about, that have to be addressed. Um, I just think that there's a lot of work to be done. It can be done on so many different levels and every small part of what people are doing within, within schools, there's kind of things that happen in playgrounds, 
there's, a, there's so much work to be done for the new generation. I think we're all full of hope that the next generation can, can grow up in a kind of different, more, more positive kind of celebration of the society that we live in, but we can't take that for granted. If we know there are people voting for the BNP, then there are kids who are growing up in families of, of people that voted for the BNP, and I think it's important that those, that those people are given somewhere uh, uh, t to go, that they don't, people aren't more, more people aren't drawn into, into that kind of way of um, expressing their disillusionment with the rest of politics that people are feeling at the moment. We haven't got a political solution to the situation that everyone's in, but certainly the far right don't offer any solutions for, for <coughs> people of, of Scotland, for working people. And that isn't their agenda, that's what they will be tapping into. And I think it's up to everyone else to, to really expose what, what the policies are, what, what the kind of um, thing that drives them is and what their real agenda is. And I think there's a lot of potential for people within Scotland to make sure that the uh, far right parties do not gain any more electoral success because that will make it far more difficult for them to organise and they will not get any more legitimacy uh, through, throughout your nation. So I'd just like to say thank you to all of you for inviting us here and I look forward to working with all of you um, and I hope the rest of the day is good and we'll be back next year. <laughs>